the, the poets teach us how to do it. The last of the, the categories that I wanted to make sure I, I, I ran past you um, was the, uh, the notion of science and, athe and, and poetry as being profoundly connected. Um, you know, there's ways in which poetry also supports science. Uh, Dickinson has this tiny poem, uh, Faith is a fine invention when gentlemen can see, but microscopes are prudent in an emergency. <laughs> but it's also true that Democritus, long before electron microscopes came up with atoms because he said to himself, if no one made this world, how could this world be? And he thought about the way dunes on, on the beach fall into different shapes. And he thought maybe there's an atom, an atom, something you can't cut, something very small, that is the building block for all of this. And he's essentially right. If you speed up time, you can see a seed grow up, become a tree, bloop out an apple, and then watch as it dries up and bloops back in and disappears back into the tree, and the tree dies, and it all disappears. All you have to do is speed up time, a different scale, and you can see that this world kind of flows. The waves aren't each independent in the ocean. They're the ocean waving, and you are the universe ewing for a minute. Bloop. We're part of this thing that is, that, is, that is magnificent. That's the natural world. But the part about being human is really deep and rich. The fact that we share this experience, and the more we're specific about it, the more we get to ride the greatest ride of knowing that you're human, you're part of this strange human experience, It seems like a lot of people would be happier with it if there was a record of it. The whole thing's being filmed, folks. But why would a record of it be better than the chord itself? Isn't the fact of it just the once enough? Einstein consoled himself a lot by saying time doesn't, isn't what it seems to be. He said, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but time isn't what it seems to be. That anything that was still is on some level. Einstein felt better about it. I'm okay with it, too. <laughs> so, there are two things I want to do in the last little bit of time. I want to read you a poem of mine if I have a chance, but first I want to do something a little silly, and I want you to play with me, okay? I want you to think for just a second that the point of life really is to just keep growing, to be there for each other, to be gentle, to be here, to be present, and to notice that life is a bit of a dream, and that dreams make the world what it is to be human, and that even though science can't figure out dreams, the dreams are just as real as any measurement you could take of anything. And because of that, I would like you to sing a little hymn called Row, Row, Row Your Boat. But I want us to sing it a certain way. I want us to sing it over and over, and each time leave off the last word until we're down to nothing. It's going to feel like it takes a while when we do the first two verses, but you're going to see it goes fast at the end, which some of you older people have noticed about life as well. Okay? You know the little song, right? Row, row, row your boat. There's three rows, but the merrily part has four. You think you can do this? Okay? Let's go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a row. Row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is row, 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 row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, merrily, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Row, row, row.
row your boat gently down the row, row, row your boat gently down, row, row, row your boat gently, row, row, row your boat, row, row your boat. Should we do one poem? Oh, yeah. do one poem. poem. And poem. Do one poem. All right. This yeah, poem, I just that. heard to me that this poem, um, it's in my book Funny, where almost all the poems have old jokes stuck in them. They're serious poems with these old jokes in them. And this is an odd poem, but there are no children in the room, and for some reason I decided this is what I wanted to read you. It's called A Little Mumba. You may know this old joke, A Little Mumba. <clears throat> the joke comes about halfway through the first page, you'll see. In two billion years, the expanding sun will dry the oceans. Meanwhile, life has been around for more than two billion years. Thus, life on Earth is at least half over. There's not a lot of time to get this figured. Three geographers hike an unknown South Sea island, raising minor mountains on their field maps. Suddenly, they're pounced on by a hidden tribe, grimacing and wild. Brought before tribal council, chief expounds their choices, death or mamba. The first says, I don't know Mamba, but death is bad, so Mamba. <laughs> the crowd, elated, yells Mamba, throws geographer into a pit and goes in after. Hours later, out staggers the stranger, naked and deeply rearranged, does not respond to any name. Tribal council asks the second, death or Mamba? Again, the answer comes, Mamba. Again, crowd hip checks the outsider, plunders in after, voracious and obscene. Again, after many hours, out crawls the map maker, bedraggled, stained, and chewed. Tribal council asks the last time, death or Mamba? Geographer looks into the pit, up at the stars, and says, I want to live, but I'm not as strong as they. I must choose death. The crowd is silent. A wise decision, says the chieftain, death by Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's hard to get through without resolving against human interaction. What stings we feel are ferocious, inadmissible, unseemly. They linger and steam. Thus, the right-thinking runt shuts them down, apes the machine. But in the end, friends, it's either mumba or death by mumba, so mumba's better. <laughs> but oh my life, the mumba of it all, the unyielding mumbacity of life, of life with others in particular, oh my time. What are you so frightened of? Of what are you so frightened of? The universe, for instance, has clusters of galaxies. We are not jealous of their cliques. And these galaxies are so big that they make the difference in size between us and a fly, well, negligible. The chatter has so little to do with anything that is the matter. You've got to figure they planned this trip together, the three geographers, Hinty, Loose, and Spoon, since June, and now it's April. And they're on this island measuring and counting, mapping and sleeping in a canvas tent. And out comes this thoroughly other from the bushes. Then it's the bums rush to the tribal circle, wide-eyed, terrified. You hear yourself say, Mumba doesn't sound so bad, and then you're lost to it, drawn in, engaged in battle, though you hate to wrangle, there you are. A long time later, the onslaught abating, you, your resistance subsides as they do. Once alone, you crawl into the powdery dirt towards the lip of the pit. One of those against whom you struggled grips your elbow, lifts you over. You hug the earth as vertigo hugs her after a stint in the tower. From this supine state, you watch Spooner and Luciata as one makes the same choice you made and the other goes in for the other. A fly goes by in its minor role as fly. <coughs> there is a great deal of action, but you are out of it now, not yet certain whether you will live through this or die. You do not know when anyone at home will notice that your trip has gone awry. You think of your front yard, all the effort of youth, the apologies. Perhaps you die now and all that work come to nothing, come to mumba on a mild night alone. You've got dirt in your mouth and on a whim, instead of spitting, you stick out your tongue and taste the soft, cool earth beneath you. You roll yourself over, stare up at the 10,000 stars. Crushed between the galactic world and all these subatomic particles is so much emotion, anger, pity, relief. And this emotion, though emanating from such an inconsequential thing as you, is as large a total as is the cosmos, and as elemental as an electrostatic charge. Neither black holes nor spider webs await us. Other webs do, but we are not the size of solitude either, so must accept them. 
It's good to remember that our troubles only obtain on this median scale of play. Elsewhere is unaware of them. All then we've ever needed is a minute change in scale. One of the wild ones is poet whispers in your supine ear, my love has me rolling and lolling around a crater on the moon. Your bruised heart overtakes your senses. I don't know whether you want to hear it or not, but the next night everyone is dancing. The babies and the crazies and the flies under the spangled leaf framed sky. And you can't help it. You join in. That's how good dancing is. Thank you.